Support for 100 Watts in a Wire is provided by BioNO Power. If you're looking for a power solution, check out BioNO Power, offering the best lithium phosphate batteries for your ham radios. Visit BioNOPower.com. That's B I O E N N O P O W.com. LDG Electronics provides state of the art antenna tuners for every amateur need. An LDG desktop tuner works automatically with nearly any station and up to 1,000 watts. LDG power tuners are ideal for portable and mobile use as they consume almost no current and can be powered by internal batteries that last up to a year. LDG tuners are backed by our two year, fully transferable warranty and our legendary customer service the best in the industry. Visit us on the web at ldgelectronics.com. And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Well, hello and welcome to 100 Watts and a Wire. This is episode number 328. My name is Christian. My call sign is Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel. And I appreciate you being here. Whether you're listening to the podcast, you can subscribe wherever you get podcasts or watching video extras, features, and live streams on YouTube. It's that in-between week, you know. Yeah, in between Christmas, the break, and New Year's. It's kind of a, a weird little time. I feel like I'm trying to disconnect because, not from life, but from the holiday break. Once the wave of Christmas crashes, having a full week after to kind of, you know, and it's tough because my kids want to listen to the Christmas music. I mean, they wanted to start this Christmas music, and I think they won. I'd have to go back and listen to the shows as we document how things are going, you know, in life and amateur radio. I think they got to us for Christmas records before Thanksgiving. I'm going to say they did. I gave in. My wife gave in. And uh, Feliz Navidad was the first song of the year. Usually, I break down mentally and cry. When I hear Karen Carpenter do anything related to Christmas, I'm like, I'm in. Okay, go get the record. I'm going to play the whole record. And usually Karen Carpenter wins for me. And then Gene Autry is my favorite. Ever since I was a little boy, my favorite record was a Gene Autry record. Incidentally, my wife had a Gene Autry record, maybe you do too, where he sings on half of the record with Rosemary Clooney, and it just blows my mind. It's wonderful. It is absolutely wonderful. I hope you had a great Christmas break and that you're ready for 2022. Can you believe it? It is coming. This year seems to go fast. Somebody once told me, the less years you have in front of you, the faster they seem to go. And that just seems to make sense to me. This year, coming off the, you know, the C word of 2020 and 2021 and... You know, not even to get into all of that mess, but um, we're not out of the woods yet. But this year was better in that regard for some and for the most part. Boy, I just want to, I'll just not talk about this. But the year we were able to do some more things that we weren't able to do. As well, I, say, I say, I say, that's what I'm trying to say. Is that we were able to do a little bit more this year. And hopefully next year is even better. But man, did it go quickly. It really did go quickly. All right, I want to share with you what I've been working on in this last week. I'm technically on vacation until the new year starts. I guess that Monday would be January 3rd. I'm not wearing a watch, man. I'm not wearing a watch as I'm on vacation. And so uh, I believe it's January 3rd. This is the last show, the 100 Watts and Wire podcast of 2021. Thank you for your ongoing support. We appreciate you. We did a lot of fun things. Uh, Didn't plan on doing a recap show for you here, but, you know, we gave away $1,000, which is great. Thank you to our sponsors, our donors, our members who make that possible. The money goes in to develop these things 
to produce the content and to distribute the content. Sometimes we can have these cool giveaways and I hope it continues. I hope it con- continues. And But with your support and the support of the sponsors, that's what happens. We want to propagate ham radio. Um, and that's all I can say about that. So let me tell you what I've been up to since we've been together. I've been off. The temperatures have gone up towards 70 degrees. It's craziness. And then you start to think, it's December, it's Christmas time, and it's 70 degrees? I got to get out there and get myself in trouble with the antennas, and I sure did. I sure did. I went out there because, well, you know, we're crazy this way. And I, I should know. There are some things that I don't I don't have to question. I can make quick decisions. At the, the, but I get out there and I look at the trees. And I'm out there because it's 70 degrees. And I'm like, well, the cold is coming at some point. Although we're at the end of December, the cold is not here. But, uh, you know, it's coming. So I better prepare. I've got a woodshed full of wood. I'm ready in that regard. Well... I'm ready with antennas too, but I'm out there and I'm looking at the limbs now that the leaves have come down off the oak trees. And I'm like, can I move something and make it a little bit better? Hey, wait a minute, there's a spot. So I've got a 20 meter antenna hanging about, oh, 45 feet, I guess 45 feet up. Does a good job for me. The ends are north and south, so it is... It's actually an inverted V, so it's omnidirectional in the science. But I do notice broadside serves east to west, so I added a second 20 meter. This is a a walk through the antenna garden. I don't have an antenna farm. I've got a garden. So I've got a second 20 meter dipole, inverted V. Again, it's meant to serve an omnidirectional when you're inverted, you know, but I do see some broadside difference. So I've got one serving east and west and north to south. Well, the north to south serving dipole isn't as high in an oak tree. And I thought, you know, I could put this thing right behind The other dipole, which is up higher, that's always a plus, but you could get into the science and say, you know what, Christian, um, you're only dealing with a a few feet here, and higher is always better in our minds, but the science of it may say, you know, a foot or two may not make the difference, and and uh, better, smarter minds than mine, who understand how, how all this science works, We'll tell you exactly what's happening in terms of, you know, and, and the soda guys may be able to tell you a little bit more, or the guys out in the parks, the flora and fauna, the the parks on the air may tell you, you know, at 25 feet, there's not that much difference between 25, 30 feet, 35, 32 feet, whatever. I'm not getting involved in all that. I knew higher might be better. And so I messed around and I threw, I got out there with a fishing pole, as is my way. I don't have a potato gun launcher. Don't really need it. You know what I mean? I'm at the highest point I'm going to work with is probably about 50 feet. And getting back to trusting myself, I should have known better. I should have just left things alone because you've been over this for years. You've looked at every possible scenario. And trust on yourself and just leave it alone. Go and and take a walk, man, is what I should have told myself. Instead, I got out there with the fishing pole and I thought I could put this right behind the other dipole and then they'll be the same height. And maybe, so I did it. I went out there, threw a line up, took me a couple tosses, got it up over there. Next thing you know... I I, I spread out the legs, the ends, and it was workable, you know what I mean? But you know what? I created a bit of a a spider web of too much traffic for my liking. It worked, but I'm talking about inches between elements. Now, I wasn't 
tripping on the fact that they were under each other, only if they were in parallel, meaning one on top of the other, you know, could that uh, affect my performance? The fact that they were kind of crossed uh, was is fine for me. I don't mind. C- close proximity in my antennas is not an issue for me. I just wouldn't want them on top of each other and running parallel to one another, okay? And, and that's something that I, I would suggest to you that you consider a- as you hang your antennas. The fact that my elements were so close together, like if the wind blew a little bit and the wire galloped a little bit, they were going to hit. They were going to hit each other. And I was like, mm, man, I don't know about this. And I, and, and I thought about it, and I had to, the sun set here completely by 5 o'clock. But about 4.45, you're looking at uh, very little light. I couldn't really see so much. So I left it up there for the night, came in, listened to it, blah, blah, blah. The next morning went out there, and it was getting colder. And I said, you know what, dummy? Put it back where it was. I didn't leave a rope up there, of course, in the old spot. So I uh, actually a first toss over this one. This is wide open and in the clear. Zoop, right on over. It's not as high, but I don't really need it to be. I don't really need it to be. And it's in the clear. Meaning I could tie this off and not have any problems at all with any other antennas. I've worked this over in my mind and physically for years. But I had to get out there and mess with it. I don't know. I actually really enjoy making antennas. From time to time, I'll get on a kick and I'll want to make, I'll just want to make things. I don't necessarily change where I'm hanging out there. Like I said, these are probably 200 year old oak trees, they're not out there swaying in the wind. And I trust them. Sometimes limbs will die. Sometimes limbs will fall down and make me make a decision out there with my antennas. But the position of them, though, that, that's good. I like that. The fact that I change things up, I think that is a ham's way of trying it out. Trying is what this is all about. You know what I mean? Try some things. See what you like. I, I did learn that the original 20-meter antenna is not performing that well. You know, it, it's... I'm going to chalk it up at this point to... You know, look, this is the intersection of life and amateur radio. There are some great minds out there doing shows and teaching you about various elements of why things work and they don't work. I know my SWR on this particular antenna is not great. And on a 20 meter antenna, I have made some nice little snappy 20 meter dipoles. And I think it's the balance. I've had this balance for many, many years. And I think it's just kind of, it's losing its shine in a way. It does okay. Everything is under two to one. But when you make a dipole for 20 meters, at least for me, I'd like to see it, you know, one to one, go across, hit, uh, or uh, what is it, one to three, maybe that's what I wanted to say. And then as you get toward the voice part portion of the band or the center of the band, you're one to one, 1. 1.0, and you kind of work your way up to 1.3, 1.4 at the other end. That I'm cool with. When I see 2.0 and it's kind of riding across, I think maybe there's a connector issue. Usually a connector issue for me means a higher but consistent SWR say 5.0, something like that, which would be completely not so good. Then I know I'm thinking connector. There's a connector issue, coax. Maybe something's happened. Maybe it's slipped and pulled through during a storm. A 2.0 for me seems like it's uh, it's okay, but maybe that balance slipping. And, And again, I'm just a normal guy who talks into the microphone. I'm not here to teach standing wave ratio. I know what I know. We'll talk to people who know more. That's kind of the 100 watts in a wire way. And uh, so that's that. So I believe I'm going to replace that 20 meter dipole. I sent out a quick text to Sidecar Steve, who's doing fine. So fine that he is enjoying himself in Hawaii. Yes, by the time uh, 
this is released, he may be on his way home. But uh, I said, uh, uh, Sidecar, could you build me one of these antennas? And I know you're saying, see, child, build your own damn antenna. And you're right. And, uh, and I do, and I, I do. And I have a, a, as much time as I can, I can whip up a nice dipole, no problem. I'm thinking about a, a double bazooka or a coaxial dipole, and Steve really makes a strong antenna. My 40-meter antenna is a double bazooka. And if you've ever owned or made a double bazooka or you bought one, you know, from... I don't know, from one of the commercial outlets, you can see the difference. When they are homebrewed by a guy like Steve, there's some consideration taken into the durability, the safety of that center point, because it is very tricky in there. When you start, you know, I've had, let me just say, without saying the names, I've had a double bazooka where I've moved it between the trees just enough on these elements to destroy the antenna. And I'm not talking about, I'm out there like the, the guys and girls who are uh, cross training with the rope and whoop, whoop. I'm not doing that, man. I'm just talking about, it is a very fragile centerpiece when you connect these pieces of coax to your centerpieces. Long story short, Steve makes a damn good antenna. It is built well. It is strong. I have confidence in it. And my 40 meter, the test, test, testicular fortitude that it puts out on net nights just saying hello to friends you know it, it gives me a sense of comfort now i would mind having him build all my antenna frankly but he won't let me pay for parts and all this sort of stuff so i'm like you know but this 20 meter i'm like steve hey uh, steve when you get to building another one can i get me one of those and so we'll see. That'll be part. Maybe we'll do a video on um, on the build. At least we can talk through, say, a video, a video extra for the YouTube channel, and we'll talk through the process for our podcast listeners. Uh, but you, you know, you can always go back there and check that out on video as well. But that's what I've been up to. I went out. I changed the position of something good. Didn't make it better. Noticed it wasn't better. And put it back. I had a good time though. Now the the days after that. I did make the original hang slightly better. I noticed that I had my elements pulled out. They weren't quite an inverted V. One was headed toward not flat top. But further out. And I needed to kind of adjust that. So they were more of a. uh, An inverted V if you will. Um, so I did move some things around, but the rope was wet from the rain. We've got some soaking rain coming through, thick fog as I'm recording now, and uh, 37 degrees, which isn't you know bad, but it wasn't the 70 when I started, wet rope, cold hands. So take it for what you will. Sometimes your original ideas and your original work will be better, will be fine, but it is uh, fun to play as well. All right, let's move into a topic that uh, has been a buzz around here for three weeks. It is Facebook. Oh, Lord. I almost didn't want to talk about it, but I want to give you an update because I started receiving emails about, hey, man, you just went and abandoned us over there, and there's 12,600 people in Facebook, and nobody knows better than me what it is I was locked out of. Now, you can go back and check the last couple of episodes to find out the shenanigans going on with Facebook and your boy. I believe in my heart that I've been hacked, right? Not just Facebook, but a focused hack across my shiz. All right? And uh, be that as it may, it had really tripped up what was going on over at Facebook because of the email uh, logins and all that sort of stuff that you use and sign up with. With Facebook, something was getting off. And Facebook just shut shut me out. And I tried all the things. You know, my problem with Facebook was that I couldn't talk to a human 
for one. It's that they're so big and there's so many users that they just give you documents of like, try this, try this, and try this, and recover it, and come on back in. And none of those things worked. No email. I couldn't get an email. I couldn't get whatever. I reported. I did all the things. Nothing, right? So I was resigned to saying, I am sort of out there now. And members of the community communicated with me. Some sent ravens over to uh, Facebook to let them know what we're doing. I uh, swiftly wanted to start a campaign to get people to come and move over, at least hedge our bets a little bit, over to Discord. Uh, But what I ended up doing, and some people did that, and I appreciate that, and uh, we'll have a community over there. Some other people can't stand Facebook. Don't use it, won't use it. And they're like, that's okay, man. Best thing ever happened in your life. Get away from them. Get away from that boy. But there's 12,600 people there in our community. And I started this community with the intention of supporting the show, having a place where people could go and ask questions and get answers. And it was a safe, cool place where D-bags and Alpha Hotels were not going to come after you. And they don't. We have a great moderating team. And that's not an issue over there for us. Well... So what I did, you know, after getting some email and commentary about, why don't you just start a new thing? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to start a new thing. The issue with Facebook was anything related to my name became a red flag for them. And they were like, no, no, man, no. And I was like, it's it was like a mistaken identity. You've, nope, you can't come in here. Anything related to Christian Kudnick was not going to make it on. So I couldn't even just start a new deal, man. I couldn't do it. It wouldn't let me. So I was on the sideline. I guess it's been about three weeks. And ultimately, a couple days ago, I was able to go back in completely under a new profile and get back into Facebook. And I got to tell you, man, it, you know, It left a horrible taste in my mouth. So you're going to see right now, there's like four profiles with my name on it. Two with two little kids that look weird, and I've already reported them. Two with me, my original, and the one that I'm using today that I can actually access Facebook in. I still exist under my old account, but I can't get into it today. Maybe that'll change. I'm not going to delete it. I can't. I can't do anything with it. So you may see me in a double double thing. Just know that if you communicate with me on the original account, so I won't see it. The second account, um, which I'm just using for the 100 Watts and a Wire community on Facebook, is still there. It's active. I'm posting things now, just like we used to do three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And we're back. Okay? So much so that I've created uh, our community question. Each week, I put out a community question, and they're back. Let's take a look at this week's community question. Let me go up here. As I set up, thank you for your patience on all these things with with Facebook as well, because I don't want to leave all these people around. Look at them. I don't want to leave them hanging. There's 12.6 thousand members in this community, and it was so frustrating. We'll leave it at that. Each week I put out a new question. It's a community question. It also has the letters CQ in there. So I kind of like that as well. I wanted to learn your ham radio lessons in 2021. 35 answers came in from our Facebook group. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. By the way, if any busters come along now and say, oh, he left, he did this, we're taking over, hijack, and none of that is... None of that is true. I have not left the platform. I am not closing the page. Okay, we're not closing down the group. It is still moderated with or without me. If I get hit by a bus, first find out who was driving that bus. Two, it is set up so the community will continue with or without me. Cubano. Obano 
Before we get into this, I'd like to toast. We will toast to a new year together, and uh, I will use coffee here. I'm not going to say if there's any Baileys inside. However, uh, cheers to you. Cheers to a great uh, 2021, and I need a, I just need a drink. So. Mmm. Mmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, I need a coffee sponsor is what I need. I need to have like a coffee sponsor for real. Okay. So this week's question, uh, what ham radio lessons did you learn this year? And 35 comments came in. We'll just go through them real quickly as we go because I know you have things to do. Uh, but I want to check here. You can also find uh, these questions, these same questions in our Discord server. Okay. James, he says he regret uh, losing years of transmitting blood, sweat, and tears of tree limbs from my stubbornness and determination to build my own dipoles. I have a milk crate of wire from off-center feds and fed half waves and balance that just never made me happy. It's just wire and math, I said. It should be easy, I said. This year, I bought a Buckmaster 80 through 10 off-center fed and wow, probably the best money I've ever spent. What a joy to transmit now. There is something to be said of, and there would be things said about you choosing to buy a commercial off-center fed dipole and not making your own, but not from me. People don't have all the same amount of time that other people do. So, you know, these things, you know, are up to the user. The user has to decide. If you've got the money for a Buckmaster, give it a shot. There's nothing wrong with that. You're supporting the ham radio community. The money goes back into the into the community. And nothing wrong with it. Don't let anybody tell you any different. But they will. But I won't. David says, uh, always check your antenna switch before transmit. If you have more than one antenna as to not use one on the wrong band and wonder why no one can hear you. Laughing out loud, November 4, Delta, Lima, Tango. Bill says, the only thing I've learned is to try to get your antennas up higher if you want to work DX. Use more than one antenna facing different directions also helps. And 7200 is full of lids. LOL. Kilo 8, Oscar, Bravo. Sean, he says... He learned how to build antennas. He's whiskey zero, zero. Boy, I'm talking like some of the uh, the folks in this in this state here. Whiskey zero, Sierra Alpha whiskey. Brian, don't pull your tribander off the tower unless you already have the parts and time to fix it. It's been sitting for eight months, and I'm crying thinking about all the DX I missed this year. Sad face emoji. Tanner, I tested in January of this year, and ham radio uh, has made a huge impact on my life. I like this. This is going to be a good one. The fact that you can talk pretty much all over the world. Come on, Sun Cycle 25, is very fascinating to me. A huge hurdle I had to overcome was the amount of concepts I had to learn to be able to understand how basic to complex electronics work. I enjoy the emergency comm side of things, like doing parks on the air activations and being able to communicate portable. I also enjoy a facet of things. At my QTH, working on uh, electronics and learning little by little by little by little by, I added those uh, letters to those words. Ham radio is very enjoyable, and I've uh, had a ton of information to learn. I enjoy the podcast. 73s. Whiskey Bravo for Zulu Kilo Whiskey. Uh, thank you uh, for that, Tanner. Appreciate you. Jim, I learned FT8 isn't as stupid as a lot of folks think it is. Okay. Adam says, I learned that there are many ways. Uh, three or four character data modes. And uh, someone should write a roadmap book called Ham Radio Data Modes for Dummies. Adam, Whiskey 7. Mike Papa. Greg, I was in a hurry to get back into ham radio a couple of months ago when I retired, so I set up quick with a vertical. 
Should have slowed it down. Very noisy with the vertical. Now I'm getting uh, ready to put up an NFED halfway with a 49 to 1 unin. Cheaper, and if done correctly, will be more effective. Greg, Kilo Alpha 8, Quebec Whiskey Alpha. Mike says, I learned a lot this year. Been working FT8, JS8, SSB, mostly QRP. Boy, this sounds like a rap song. With my IC705, one thing that really stands out is having a good antenna and doing some experiments. Raising the matching network transformer off the ground can lower the SWR on some bands, making it unusable without a tuner. Oh, making it usable without a tuner. Whiskey 4, India Sierra Bravo. These are a lot of words. And words are all I have. <laughs> Bee Gees making it into here. I, I like it. I like it. Jerry says, uh, we travel full-time in our RV and keeping up with programming my radios is the current location is a pain for my older radios. Thankful for programming software and my compatible newer radios. He is November 1, Alpha Victor Yankee, currently in Utah. Rhea says, you got back in. Nice. No exclamation point. Just, yes, I got back in. Is that my stomach? Oh, we're going to have to wrap it up. Lord, let me put a little bit of coffee in there. To, you don't need to hear all that. Just as a uh, side note, it is uh, before 8 a.m. here in the Midwest on December 30th. There you go. So I've, uh, in other words, I have not uh, eaten breakfast yet. I usually don't eat this time of day, but it, perhaps it, uh, my stomach had something to say to Rhea. I don't know. Jerry, uh, Wire X is only competitive, uh, completely accomplished on the Wireless X unit or on a Wires X repeater and not a generic hotspot. November 9, X-Ray Romeo. John says, since I only, uh, was, uh, since I only licensed in December 2020, everything I know this year, everything I learned this year, not much, but a lot to me. I learned to ma uh, that mastering CW takes a lot more commitment and practice than I had guessed. And he also learned that there are some gracious people in the world who are willing to help. And uh, he learned that passing a test doesn't count for much when it comes to being a good operator. He's Alpha Charlie 9, X-Ray, X-Ray. If you have comments on any of these, you can post them uh, on the YouTube, you can send me a uh, an email. Or you could also comment below the videos for these if you like to. John, uh, you know, uh, the test is part of the FCC requirement. How you get there um, is on you. Whether you memorize, it's on you. Whether you know every aspect of it. I can't believe that everyone would know everything thoroughly besides the answers to these questions and these choices the real learning for me and many others is a when you get your license, then you start to really uh, learn. Max says, I learned CW um, to an effective level. Now it's almost all I do. Kilo Juliet 4, Whiskey November Alpha. And a, a quick side note here, just to let you know that these will remain in uh, they're going to be newer now. These um, community questions they're going to be newer on the Discord, but um, and they will float downstream on the Facebook group. But if you do a search for community question, they should come up, and um, so you can always reference back. I may not be able to read all of these uh, during the show, but I appreciate um, the feedback, and they're there for others to read, which is the point of having a community. Jamie says anyone can be an experienced operator, but not every experienced operator can be an Elmer. Whiskey 2, Golf, Papa, Romeo. I like that. Steve says, welcome back, Christian. I'm starting to explore more and more going QRP low wattage with digital modes. 12 meters is especially interesting lately. Using a simple whip antenna, 6 foot. In height, reaching across the Pacific Ocean with a mere 20 watts is opening yet just another door in ham radio. Whiskey 3 Alpha Zulu. 
Tango. Can I uh, jump over to Discord real quick? Uh, da, well, Da says, hi, Christian. I just want to say hello to him. That response is there. Many, many others there on Facebook as well. Jumping over to Discord, I had to do it this way. I, I created a form for our friends. We'll do it right in the server now. So again, everybody can read these responses. I do use forms. I'll be using them for live shows, for your questions, that sort of thing. Uh, but when things went sideways with Facebook, I needed to try to figure out how to use a form to get it over to Facebook, get it in there, and have everything sort of come back to one central location for me. So the ham radio uh, lessons moved over that way. Bob on Discord says uh, he's Kilo Juliet 5, Charlie Foxtrot. That's KJF. KJF. Jeez, I'm butchering this, Bob. Sorry. Kilo Juliet 5, Charlie Foxtrot, that he waited too long to put up a loop antenna. So far, it works very well. Hope it make uh, hope to make it a full wave, adding about 65 feet. And this will let me rise up a little higher. Right on. Let's see. Oh, it may not load it all up for me. There we go. Give me number two here. Scott, he's a Whiskey 8 United Foxtrot Oscar. He says, he uh, start with what you have and don't be afraid to experiment. You don't need the latest, greatest, or newest stuff to enjoy this hobby and service or life, for that matter. Right on. David, Alpha Echo 5, Oscar Victor. I learned my old radio still work well, and I've been away for far too long. Welcome back, David. It's good to have you in our community. Appreciate you every day. Kilo X-Ray 4 Tango, uh, Quebec. He says, life changes and moving sucks. Yes, we know Ben uh, is a member of our community. He is moving, I believe, from Kentucky to Virginia. And uh, moving does suck, I agree. Ian, November Victor Ford, Charlie, a net control operator for 100 watts and a wire. If you'd like to be a net control operator, drop us a line either on Facebook and or Discord and Sidecar Steve will put you in the game. He learned CW. He's improving his kit building skills. That's what he learned in 2021. Alpha Juliet 6, Romeo X-Ray. Woo, this is a big one. How much fun it is to do HF and especially doing contesting. Being licensed for a year and a half, and I really caught the contesting bug. The rush of making contacts both via voice and even digitally is great. Speaking of digital, what a thrill to hit DX stations halfway around the world. Thailand, Indonesia, Oceania, Korea, Russia. It just amazes me. What exciting a bunch of electrons can do off a string of wire. So cool, this hobby. Only wish for 22 hitting that lottery uh, to buy more stuff. Grin. Okay. All right. It's good to have goals. Winning a lottery would be one for me. I think there's one that has a kajillion dollars right now. I was talking to my wife like we need to get some tickets. And Farmer Rex, we got a farmer, we've got a pastor. This is Farmer Rex, Kilo Echo uh, Kilo Echo Zero, Mike Hotel Juliet. 200 watts of solar panels will only produce 15 watts of power when snowing and blowing at uh, winter field day. With no sunshine, have alternative sources of power. That's what he learned. Very good. Hey, I want to share with you something uh, really cool. It's going to be coming up in the new year. It's called 30 Days. This is a new show. Uh, it is part of 100 Watts in a Wire and will be released as such uh, as the podcast. And we'll also be putting the same video extras, features, and that sort of thing on the YouTube channel. But let me share with you 30 Days. Uh, go to 100 Watts in a Wire and click the 30 Days tab. This is an honest review system that is in play right now. Currently, we have operators like you. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be the one that says, go buy this, go buy that. You do this. Ha ha. Oh, and on the side, you know. I, not that I would do that, but I don't do it because I think reviews can be skewed by the people who give them sometimes. And it's it's about, hey, how about reviewing this thermos? Okay, do I get to keep the thermos? This thermos is the best thermos in the whole world. 
watch this. Look at it. It's got this little mouthpiece on the thermos and a lid. It's got a lid. And you can put stuff in the thermos. Mm. And when you drink from this thermos, your stomach is just happy. Then it actually scientifically activates your stomach to do what you did with the thing and the juice and the... Come on now. Um, so what I have decided to do was to put reviewers from our community together and have them spend 30 days with a product that's a ham radio product or a ham radio adjacent product and come on the show and talk about it. Let's give an honest review system. And then you guys can decide whether this is a product worthy of your dollar or not. Period. Something really exciting, though, when you scroll down the page, you'll learn all about 30 days. It doesn't take too much to figure out what I just said can be cut in half by saying your peers will review it. They'll come on the show and talk about it after spending 30 days with a product or ham radio or ham radio adjacent products. We, uh, we do things with other products that sort of enable us. We'll take a look at some of those, too. Now, I got to tell you, this is money coming right out of pocket. When I mentioned earlier in the show that your contributions, uh, any donations and memberships, sponsorship money, it all goes back into the show. Now, what that means is the development, creation, and distribution. All of these things cost money, right? Nobody's, nobody's, you know. It has to go back to enabling the process, to propagating ham radio. So, when you donate, when you buy me a cup of coffee, when you uh, become a member for a year, a sustaining member, there are benefits to you and the show. That money and our sponsorships propagate. So, you like that? Propagate. Throw my hands up. Propagate. So, an interesting new program that came through. Uh, my friends at LDG said, listen, see child, this is what we're thinking about. We would like to do a matching program offer. Essentially now, LDG wants to see your photos with Yesu radios. So if you've got an LDG tuner helping your Yesu radio, the first 100 people to send in a photo of their radio and their tuner will win, will actually get something from this. Okay. It's all detailed here on the website. You're going to get an interface cable for free, your choice of one or two cables. And you're going to enter into a drawing to win an LDG MC101 analog meter. But when you give a photo, they're going to give $5 back to the 30 days program up to 100. So the first is a $500 value for the show. It will mean that we can take that money put it back into the market by buying ourselves some products, giving it back to you. You see how this all propagates ham radio, right? So LDG, $5 per photo. There's a link to a form where you can attach your photos. Yesu Radio users, there is a, a form, a quick and easy form to upload your photo right here on 30 Days, as well as the form to enter to become a reviewer. Now, I love this. Thank you to our sponsors. Um, $5 for an image. If you use a Yesu radio with an LDG tuner, send it in to the place uh, marked there on the website. We have a chance to get $500 to put back into product to send back out to be reviewed. You get it? Dig it? I do. All right, I want to share with you something cool. Uh, you know, my youngest uh, during last semester was taking classes on Saturday morning, and I was the daddy wagon. This year, uh, starting a new semester in January, she's going to be um, on a different day, opening up Saturday mornings again. So I want to announce to you that Saturday mornings, I'm going to do a live show, a community-based live show. Uh, show? Bring a live shoe. No hot shoes. Now, don't start any fires here in the studio. But listen, Saturday mornings, a live show. We'll do uh, invitate uh, invitations. Come on in. Hang out with us. And um, 
We'll share rag chew. We will answer your questions. I'm going to rope sidecar Steve back into this. You can join us in the chat. I may even leave the cool, uh, the key under the mat outside to bring some people onto the show to talk to us. We'll do a meet and greet. We'll answer some questions. We'll rag chew a little bit. Saturday morning live, 100 watts and a wire. I believe we'll shoot for maybe, maybe 9 o'clock a.m. Central Time. Uh, click the notification bell for you uh, folks who are doing uh, YouTube and check out the extras and that sort of thing, and you want to see this stuff back. Live streams can't be on the uh, on the podcast. Now, I could I could take this stuff and pull the audio if it's that compelling and you want to hear it uh, as you drive along or move your home or whatever you're doing. I could do that if you're interested in that. Just let me know. Uh, But the goal is to do a live stream, a community-based live stream where we hang out together, talk, have fellowship, catch up, shoot the S, rag chew a little bit, and uh, and there you go. Saturdays, I'm thinking 9 o'clock Central Time, but hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss a thing. You'll know when it goes live, and I'd love to see you in the chat there as well. So just to recap. Uh, trust your instincts with your antennas. Play as much as you want and that you're physically able to do, uh, given the conditions, the weather, all that sort of stuff that I've been working on. Uh, the 30 days uh, is in play right now. We have operators who are doing reviews. They are testing products and antennas. You can learn more about that at 100 Watts and a Wire. Click the 30 Days tab and Yesu Radio Operators. This is a good one for you because you can help raise money for the show and this program, this peer review program. All you need to do, I can tell, I've been I'm talking for a while. My radio just fell asleep. It was like, oh, I'm so bored. Uh, you, $5 per photo, use the form, uploaded. Hey, that's easy if you uh, run a, a Yesu and an LDG tuner. We can bring that in, put the money back into the show, as is our way. And live streams, Saturday mornings, I'm thinking 9 o'clock-ish. Now, this first one would be New Year's. I'll be wearing glasses, dark dark ones, because a little champagne goes a long way on your boy, this old Polish boy. Happy New Year. I'm drool coming out, and I fall asleep. So uh, Saturday morning, New Year's Day, I don't care. I'll put on some sunglasses and a wig. I don't, I don't care. I'll wear a hoodie. We're just going to get together and hang out. If you, you know, if you're available, uh, come and join us for that. Our uh, nets will continue as well Sunday evening, 7 o'clock. Join us always on 40 meters, sometimes on 80. The frequencies are posted on our social media. That's the Discord server and the Facebook group. Plus, we use NetLonger. All right. I just want to wish you the best for... 2022. I'll see you in the live streams. We'll talk to you on the radio and uh, take care of yourselves. Look after each other. Leave people alone. That was one thing my father would say. Leave it alone. Got a cut on your arm? Leave it alone. See a snake in the grass? Leave it alone. Leave people alone was a simple motto for my father. And as I get older, I I understand it a little bit more. Uh, You know, Leave people alone. You know, we saw some cases today where a uh, guy was thinking that buying a commercial, you know, people can't, people will give you opinions on everything. You bought, you didn't buy your own? You, you bought your own and you didn't make your own? It was a shame. Leave people alone. You know, we need everybody we can in this hobby and service. And uh, everybody's welcome here at 100 Watts and Wire. The opinions are your own. They're my own, Um, but I don't, I'm not getting involved in that. If you want to make a decision that's right for you, that's right for you. So that's my wish for the new year, that we leave people alone, that we pick each other up, take care of each other when we can, look out for each other. And by all means, this hasn't changed. Please try and stay above the noise. 7-3. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.